I am Luther Kruger, the uh, Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking based out of Minneapolis. And I'm in beautiful, uh, rural, out, out of the way, Yakuts, Oregon. And I was meaning to ask you how to pronounce your last name. La Liberté. La Liberté. I was going to say that, but I thought I heard you're a cheesehead and it might be Lalibert, you know, right? Well, I'm a cheesehead too. <laughs> but, <laughs> or La Liberty in cheesehead country. There you go. La Liberté. Here in. Uh, in Yakas, Oregon, uh, and he's donating this to, well, on loan, whatever we'll call it, it's always going to be uh, partly yours, but we're going to take good care of it uh, in Minneapolis, going to make use of it at events, and uh, I've asked John, and he's willing to talk a little bit about the history of it, um, so take it away. Well, this is a passion of my late wife, Susan Neustetter, and she was introduced to solar ovens at the Southwest Solar Fair in around 2004. And she bought a sun oven, um, one of the small versions, um, in 2004, and it was a very hard decision for her because it was at a lot of money to us at that time. And so we spent several days toiling over whether we should purchase this oven. And that was the start of a passion that led to um, her buying uh, the v Villager solar oven. And she, like Luther, was a collector of solar ovens. And many of what Luther has in his collection, Susan had in hers. So she had uh, Molly Baker, and she made her own solar ovens out of visors that you would put in your car to keep them protected from the sun and she had all kinds of special pots she would put in her solar oven she had metal ones she had clear glass ones and she used her solar ovens a lot and she got to the point where she would teach solar oven classes on how to cook with solar at the um, Southwest Solar Fair in John Day Oregon which is where she bought her first one and the other passion she had besides solar ovens was outdoor cooking with Dutch ovens. And she was introduced to uh, Dutch ovens about the same time she was introduced to solar ovens. And she has one big solar oven that weighs 800 and some pounds. And she also has about 800 and some pounds of cast iron <laughs> that she have, had bought over the same time frame. So, um, because she was going to do an outdoor catering service to cater up to 50 people. So she was amassing her, her outdoor cooking kitchen supplies and, and then she abruptly passed away. And so later on, Luther, I put out that the solar oven was for sale up on the internet because I didn't know what to do with it. So I posted it on several web pages on the solar oven and I did Facebook and Craigslist and all over the place and Luther popped up and he was interested in the solar oven and we talked for a year or two <laughs> and he eventually convinced me to uh, um, have this fall into his hands and his ownership and and I think I found a good place for the solar oven to a man who has the same passion that Susan had when uh, she was collecting solar ovens and so it's like passing the baton on to the next person and I'm very happy I it found a good home because it was because it was very hard for me to uh, to um, give up the, the solar oven so and um, like the first solar oven, I have to add, as a sidebar story, this was a big decision that she and I both made. And I thought about it for a, uh, uh, about 10 minutes. And I said, you know, everybody's allowed a boat. And <laughs> this is your boat. So you probably won't get 
a lot of use out of it, but you'll get a lot of pleasure out of it. So that's how the solar oven came to reside in my life, and now I'm passing it on to Luther, and this will be the next chapter in Susan Solar Oven's adventures. Sure. So thank you, Luther, for oh, no, thank you. Uh, it's, for doing this. Yes, and uh, I will be definitely honoring her service to the whole promotion of solar cooking uh, in the world. We'll be putting it to use in Minneapolis, various events. We have farmers markets all over the city. Uh, there's one three blocks from my home, and I hope to reserve a space where I can just park this thing and cook during the whole uh, during the whole farmers market. Yeah, it's every Sunday. There's probably a dozen around the city on different days of the week. There's also uh, every year they have two or three what they call uh, open streets events, where they'll go from Lake Street to 46th, which is about 16 long city blocks uh, commercial, but they block off the whole thing and traffic can go through the intersections. But everyone has their their stands, their political causes, you know, their artistic uh, stuff. Uh, well, this will have a place in those when they resume uh, after the pandemic, or be, if the, if they'll allow them. <laughs> I'm going to try to get it as many places as possible. Um, we also have a local community school where they uh, teach the kids uh, how to do vegetable gardens. They have a big vegetable garden there. And so the critical points of you know weeding and then planting and harvesting, uh, this will be there to feed everyone that's working on that. Um, and as often as, as they can uh, manage it, the, there's actually a family that's a little closer to the school than me, and they may actually uh, hold it in between other events for their use. Um, but we will be taking very good care of it. Um, it's an investment in, in what I feel is like it's kind of my calling of late. And it's been 15 years of collecting these cookers, but uh, I've gotten, gotten a reputation for knowing a lot about cookers because every one that I get, I put through their paces, and people come to me to ask which ones work, what should we use for, for this situation, and so forth. And uh, I'm a firm believer in volume. If, uh, if you can feed a village, you know, as this one does, uh, uh, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, so... I appreciate it. We used it on several occasions to cook Thanksgiving meal for 50 people. Oh, yes. So we cooked several turkeys in uh -huh. here and 50 loaves of bread. And um, she used to sell solar bread at the farmer's market, and she'd be sold out in 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So she would go through 50 loaves in like an hour. Yep. So it, there's something about solar cooking that people really enjoy and appreciate. So yes. it's... Uh, I'm glad it, it's going to Luther. <laughs> Thank you. You, you got, and uh, speaking of family dinners, uh, we had uh, one time where we had 17 nieces, nephews, aunts, and uncles at our place. And the whole day before, I put out seven or eight cookers to bake stuff, whatever, and the next day was able to cook all day. Everything on the table was solar cooked for 17 people. Yes. It was massive. This will save me all the trouble of hauling <laughs> out seven yeah. or eight cookers at a time uh, if I go that route. I mean, I'll probably still use some of them, but. Uh, so it'll be put to use. Uh, they're meant to be put to use. Yes. Um, and just the long term, uh, everyone that's going to see this on the Facebook, the Solar Cookers Worldwide Network that uh, Solar Cookers International maintains, they know that I initially was joking about a museum, but I'm dead serious about it now, and this would be obviously kind of a centerpiece. Um, uh, hopefully we can find a space for the museum in a, a nice sunny locale. Minneapolis is probably not going to make the cut no. <laughs> for people that put in a bid, you know, like for the Olympics. Um, but where it goes, it'll have to be where they can be open most days of the week, so it'll, it'll get even more exposure to people. Uh, as far as the possibilities, uh, anything from the Molly Baker, which is good for, you know, a couple or a family of four, maybe for, you know, an entree at a time, all the way up to, you know, feeding a, a community gathering and so forth. So, uh, that's, you can guarantee that's what's going to happen with this. So, thank you. Well, thank you.